you imagine something on your head of what you're looking for and and reality is so much more exuberant and wonderful than you could have ever predicted thank you tally for joining us today to do an interview about your um, film documentary film my darling supermarket and as you already told us before, it has been like a five-year process doing this film with a three-year research phase. And in this process, when did you decide that you want to film the workers in the supermarket and not the customers? It never occurred to me to film the customers. The customers were never interesting to me. Because the whole concept of the film is to explore what you know what was going on on people's heads while they were doing a repetitive work and while they were living in that space because supermarket workers spend a lot a lot of hours in that environment in that closed environment supermarkets have no windows have no escape filled with shelves and, and, and you know it's a very specific scenario and customers were never interesting to me there are people coming in and out they're not looking at these people, they're not really interacting with anything, you know, they're coming in, doing their shopping and going out. For me, the fascinating thing was to approach the people who had to stay there all day, you know, uh, and, the, 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 and explore the contrast uh, of what they, you know, uh, of where their mind wandered because humans are not made for that we are uh, how to say um it's an escape mechanism that we have you know for our minds to wonder and to think and, and when you're in such environments and a lot of people i spoke to told me, I met people who work in the supermarket and then left and people I even met after I did the film that told me, oh, uh, the time of my life when I worked in a supermarket, I had the most bizarre conversations I've ever had, you know, people told me this. I had a friend that worked in a, in a factory, in a medicine factory where you had the same, to do the same things every day. And, and also she talked about those experiences and, 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 and and what she thought about while there and bizarre dreams that she had because you know we're not a, ma ma a machine that can repeat the same work over and over again and this 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 deep humanity has to leak out somewhere and and the idea was for the film to capture that so i think approaching the customers would be kind of breaking you know this whole uh uh bubble uh, because customers don't even look at the people working there you know i especially also see this um this discrepancy between this void of repetitive work and then uh the meaning we assign to our lives and the meaning we kind of think about while doing this work as a worker in the supermarket so, um, and you also capture this a lot with visual elements. For example, once in a the movie, there's, uh, there's a poster which tells us um, it's the festival of dreams. Yeah, okay. There is something uh, about this festival of dreams that I think only translates to Brazilian audiences, um, which we talked about this during the making of the film and during the editing, that this was a problem, that it would not translate perfectly to international audiences. But we said, that's okay. You know, it's still an interesting image because the word dream in Portuguese, which is written that in that poster, which is sonho, in Portuguese has a double meaning. It means dream, that you dream at night, but it's also a sweet that you eat. It's like uh, bread, cream and bread. It's like a, a fried uh, sweet. But it also means dreams. So 
when they put up this poster, this uh, uh, big thing at the supermarket, that they actually meant festival of uh, the sweet, you know, that they were going to make a lot of this little cake. But for us, it's a metaphor. It has a double meaning. In the context of the film, it has a double meaning because, yes, like you said, we're talking about existential void. We are talking about unfulfilled dreams. Um, so, so that's why we used uh, that image. But we love it. Uh, for Brazilian audiences, it has that extra layer that unfortunately we cannot translate you know i can talk about it now but this is something impossible for us to, to put in the subtitles because that meaning it's only in portuguese that you understand that a dream also means a cake and and the film is always playing with these things it's always playing with the material and the existential it's always playing it's like and it's putting up the this question um what does it mean to be in the world? Is this just a material experience? Or is there something more to this place that we're living in? Is this just this, this superficial and boring materiality? Or is there something more? We don't know, you know, nobody, you know, we're not there to ask, answer this question, but we are there to discuss the human search. And I think that's what this film's tries to do is the same thing like the character we have that works in the security she's up in the security booth and she's looking down on on all the humans you know and we like to joke that that she's the god of the film she's like this controlling wonderful mother that's looking down on everyone and telling who is doing something wrong who is trying to steal nutellas and and you know, and the film puts up this this is playing with this this uh, these things. You know, the mundane and the existential. I think it is very coincidental, very impressive, but very coincidental. Uh, for example, the the poster with the double meaning of the dreams and the sweet, uh, the, the sweet cake or um, specialty um, you have in Brazil, but as well at several. Um, times in the film I saw that there had to be some kind of coincidence at work for example the butterfly on a CCTV camera um, how much did you play with this coincidental shot see that's the thing I don't know how to answer this sometimes it's just luck you know it, we didn't see the butterfly we didn't plan we were shooting at that place you know i didn't think about that possibility of the, some things you look for you know some things are in your script you know you're looking for for instance i wanted to have a romance in the film like i wanted to find two characters that maybe were flirting and this is something that i knew i was looking for but other things they you know when you're immersed in that universe and gaining intimacy with it and exploring you know wonderful elements just come up and they give you new ideas for instance the butterfly just you know showed up when they were filming and then we found out that butterflies would come in that stock all the time and it was just oh and we were we stopped what we're doing and for like hours we were just chasing a butterfly all over the supermarket because for us it was just this amazing image image how how could you imagine you know nature breaking into this very industrial you know setting you know you don't imagine and then we found that really fascinating and we we started looking for other forms of, of nature inside the supermarket. So we looked for the spider, the spider web and in the sound design, there's a lot of noises, you know, that also informed the way we did our sound design and this very interesting idea of this nature that's trying to break into this place. So there's sounds of wind that we use and, and, and other kinds of things, you know, through the sound design of the film. But, but the butterfly was, was a gift that I was happy and then became a big symbolic, you know, element in the film, became very important. 
as you mentioned, what is also very important in the film is, I think, the music and the sound design you just mentioned right now. And I just wanted to ask you um, how you think that uh, music blurs this, this line between fact and fiction, because the documentary kind of escapes the um, realm of the real and it kind of becomes something a piece of fiction or a piece of musical I would say with the music perfect. yes perfect that's exactly what, what, what you're saying that's the function of the music you know in that film is to drive you away to put you a little bit uh, away from the normalcy normancy and I don't know if this word exists normalcy of the images of a supermarket we needed to make it bizarre and 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 and, and different and and the music is a way of breaking that reality and 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 being immersed in a more fictionalized and, and fantastical universe and and at some point at the beginning when I was doing the treatment, I, I wanted to also use animation because I felt like I needed something to break through the physicality of that universe. And I felt like, oh, with animation and things like this. And eventually I realized, okay, uh, yeah, we don't need, it's, it's too much. We don't need animation because the music is already doing that job, you know. The music uh, is already, uh, has that, that, that function of, of, uh, uh, of connecting the film and bringing that that subtext that it needs. Um, so it's like you said, it's a musical. You know, the film it's 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 almost a musical, and that was the goal. I mean, from from the beginning. I think it's very very interesting how you how much thought you put into uh, the movie and how much thought there is behind actually every scene and every tone of, of music I would say right now and did you also uh, take part in the cope on the production of music did you also co-produce the music or did you have in mind which kind of music it should be uh, yes well that's the thing I mean the musician is my partner and we live together <laughs> he's the composer of the film so, and we, we even, he um, called a, a colleague of his, a friend of his, that, that they worked together. And so uh, he came also to work on the music. So it was those two composers. And, and yeah, it was, it is uh, a very close relationship because obviously we live together and he knows the project very well and it was very nice because he knew this project from the beginning from early stages so uh you know when i started shooting the film we were meeting and talking about the music and the concepts and and uh so i i wouldn't have been able to do the film if it wasn't like that if 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 it wasn't such a close you know uh, relationship with the musicians because uh, it's a lot of music <laughs> it's a lot of music and it's a big part of the film and it's very hard we would never have been able to do it you know once the film is shot it, it, it's impossible you know you need to have an idea of what the musical concept is before uh, before you making it to set up the tone like I knew I wanted to use these big waltzes and make the film dance and, and we knew the music needed to have a narrative. I mean, there's a narrative in the music uh, because at some point the film has to fly. So you go from this very sometimes rigid and dissonant tones that go through the bones of the supermarket. And then we go through this very lyrical music that becomes almost a cliche, you know. So you see movement, you know, in an aesthetic that's very stable, that is the universe of the supermarket, of this material world. And the music is like moving around. And, and it's uh, and he has a lot of texture and character and, and, and I love it. I love uh, music. It's, it's it's a big part of my work. 
I found out, you know, doing this film, like, uh, it's very, very important. Like, I cannot start thinking of, of, of a film without also thinking about the sounds and the music. And, 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 and for me, it's like 50-50, you know, when you're making a film, 50% is image and 50% is everything you hear is the sound design, is the music. I mean, the type of music you use has such a big influence in changing the tone or setting up the mood of the film. And it's such a big thing. And I feel people don't talk about enough the use of music. We never talk about this. We don't discuss. We don't, oh, let's put some music when we finish the film. It's like, no, how can we do this? It's like 50% of your film, it's music. And, and we're gonna talk about it after we finish the film. It's impossible, you know? We have to think about how the music sounds to that specific characters, how it alter, alters, you know, the narrative, the mood of the film. <laughs> So half, I would say, uh, half of the music, it's completely originally composed. Let's say 50%. The other half is like music that already existed. I use this old uh, ballets, music from ballets and things like this that I really liked. And I gave to the composers and they changed it a little bit. They like tweaked it, made it a little they interpreted it but with the edit you know the tone we already had the tone of what we are using like they gave me we talked about the film and they gave me a lot of references that they liked and that, that i liked and we edited with those references when we edited the film we already had this tone so that was very important because the editing is also a very musical process very musical it's impossible for you to edit the film with a certain kind of music and then change it completely later. You know, it changes the edit. So we are already editing in a specific tone that we had prearranged with the musicians. Uh, so those ballets, everything we knew we were going to use, but they tweaked it, you know, which was wonderful. And the waltz is composed. It's based on a Shostakovich waltz that I love uh, and they sort of did something new. You know, I knew I wanted to use the wall and the waltz and they reinterpreted it. But the other part, this other 50%, uh, some of it they composed, it was originally composed, contemporary music. And what they also did is when they went to the studio, they um, improvised with the musicians all kinds of sounds and those those this material that they improvised we brought to the edit room and they edit those sounds into the film how did that name develop my darling supermarket was it a spontaneous idea or oh, who is my darling in supermarket ah, you know <laughs> actually that's not the original name of the film the original name of the film was have a nice day you know, like this thing that people say, oh, have a nice day when you leave the, the store. So that's that's the the title we had for the film for a very long time, right until the very end. And uh, but the problem is when I went like when I wrote the treatment of the film, I gave this name, have a nice day. When I started filming, it was a fantasy I had in my head. You know, I, I go to supermarkets and I know people don't say have a nice day. I think it was like this fantasy that I have. Oh, this is a nice title. But when you go to supermarkets, people don't say this. They don't exactly say here in Brazil, have a nice day. They say anything else, anything else, anything else. It's not really used anymore, have a nice day. Anything else? Uh, thank you, come back soon, and, and they say things like this. So 
we felt like it was a bit fake, you know, we don't have a character saying it have a nice day and she knew about this title the producers knew when we had a little discussion should we use it my darling supermarket we were a bit unsure and at the end we decided to go with it because it's like you know it's this affection the affection and the supermarket which is things that in people's minds don't go together and in a way is what this film do so we went with it. Now I really like the title, <laughs> but at the time we were we we're all a bit unsure. Like, does this make sense, my darling supermarket, my dear supermarket? We were all a bit, and at the end we sort of we 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 were convinced that that it was it, it was gonna be called my darling supermarket, and it was important to have the word supermarket at the title. I think you need to know you're going into a supermarket and you're gonna spend the entire film inside a supermarket. I think it's, it's, it's important to, to have that word in the title. Maybe is there anything else, Charlie? <laughs> because the the film asks any anything else in the end, right? Yeah, uh, I wanted to, the film to end in a deconstruction. This we knew from the beginning, you know, that you start in a very static war world where people are saying, "Oh, I do the same thing every day," and da da da. And through the course of the film, we wanted to take you to a new dimension, you know, to deconstruct everything that you were seeing. So uh, it was very, it took me a long time to get to this ending that you see there. For a while, it was a dance. It was like a dancing camera. It was a waltz. It was something to break the physicality. And uh and one of the producers says i'm not sure this is the best ending maybe try something else and and finally i started trying up some effects some you know on premiere and things like this and and i i took this shot that i really like that is the shot that you see at the end and and i mirrored that space and it was suddenly it hit us okay this is this this could be a really interesting ending because it's almost like the character penetrates in a different dimension. It's the same world, but it's a new dimension, you know, it's playing with this. And when you ask the question, anything else, which is a question everybody in the supermarket asks all the time, anything else, what do we want, what do you want? This question now has an existential flair because it's asking what else is there to life, you know? So again, it's the mundane and existential play. Anything else, what do you want? And I really love it because there's a lot of people that saw the film here in Brazil and they say when they go to the supermarket, it's like a whole different experience. And they say when the when the person in the counter asks me anything else, I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's like, it's a strange question. And, and I love that the film could have this effect on people. So when you put up anything else, it's like it's transformed. The meaning of this world, of this sentence is completely transformed. I mean, that's that's the goal of, of the end. Thank, thank you very much. I think it was, was a very insightful um, interview.